Hi everybody, this is JJ with ASUS and back again here on the Newegg YouTube channel. This time we're gonna be talking about these awesome PCIe NVMe M.2 SSDs that we absolutely love. They're simple and easy to install. They offer outstanding performance and responsiveness, and of course, an extremely high level of reliability. Now, for the new AM5 platform, we're gonna be taking it to the next level and upgrading ourselves from not only supporting PCI Express Gen 4, but to PCI Express Gen 5. And we're also gonna really be taking it up to a whole new level in terms of the number of M.2 SSDs that will be supported on motherboards. So let's find out about all the things that we're gonna keep in mind for M.2 based SSDs on the latest generation X670E based chipset for the AM5 platform. Now, another thing that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind is going to be heat sinks, as well as the overall kind of thermal characteristics of an M.2 based SSD. Now, taking look at these two drives right here you can see that this actual Patriot M.2 NVMe M.2 SSD already comes with the heatsink and that's great but in pretty much most situations all of our motherboards are going to pretty much have all the M.2 slots actually have heat sinks on them so if your SSD pretty much looks like this where there's no heat sink on there you're good to go but the important thing to keep in mind is that there will be a difference between some boards featuring a dual contact heat sink based design now what does this mean well when you take actually a look at an M.2 SSD you'll actually find that there's NAND chip actually on the front as well as on the back and the reason why is that as actually you increase the number of NAND chips to get to higher densities so let's say like one terabyte to two terabytes to four terabytes to eight terabyte drives and of course even more as we get to the next generation of M.2 based SSDs you'll find that there's actually going to be NAND on both sides and what this ideally means is to be able to ensure the best thermal performance you actually want to have a, a form of heat dissipation not only for the front but also for the back now higher end motherboards like take for instance like our ROG Strix or our ROG Crosshair series of motherboards will actually have a dual heatsink design, meaning that actually the top of the motherboard, when you talk about the heatsink, such as take for instance this heatsink from our Hero, it's quite dense and quite large and has really been designed to be able to give you great thermal performance for those next generation PCI Gen 5 M.2 SSDs. And you'll see on the underside, it has a thermal pad. That thermal pad will make contact with the top side of the M.2 SSD. But you would see then on the back, in the back, you would then have those NAND chips still be exposed. So on higher performing boards, there'll actually be a dual contact design where there'll be a pad and a heatsink on the opposite side on the motherboard that will allow you to go ahead and have the best thermal dissipation performance. So if this is something you're gonna care about, again, this is something you're gonna wanna look for on your motherboard. So now moving to the motherboard here, you can see I've got our ROG Strix X670E-E based motherboard. This motherboard is a really impressive board and supports quite a bit of awesome features, including support for up to four M.2 SSDs, including that PCI Gen 5 M.2 SSD, and with heat sinks for every single slot. Now I've gone ahead and removed one heat sink to be able to show you another cool feature that we have in relation to M.2 SSDs. You're gonna find on the latest generation of motherboards, a tool-free base design. So the cool thing is with this Q-latch base design implementation, you'll see I've gone ahead and angled in my M.2 SSD, just go ahead and hold it down right here. There's a small actually little latch that when I turn that latch, it will actually lock the M.2 SSD in place. So that's great because it means that I don't have to worry about having any type of standoff, taking a small screw with a precision tip screwdriver and getting it screwed into place. From there, the only actual thing that I have to screw into place will be actually the top heat sink and I'll be good to go. So this is also another thing that will be beneficial that you would want to keep in mind when evaluating your motherboard and the installation of your M.2 base SSDs. So the next thing that we're going to want to talk about is going to be that when you're evaluating your motherboard, you may actually have motherboards that actually feature supplemental forms of storage expansion. And so what I mean by that is that traditionally when we take a look at a motherboard, you'll find that the board will have multiple slots on the actual board itself. So next up, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about kind of understanding some of the aspects in terms of how you can have supplemental storage on your motherboard and how that can actually add into the overall M.2 SSD experience. So when you're looking at a motherboard, traditionally you might think that the slots on the motherboard, so take for instance here, the slot that is exposed here, or there's another slot that's gonna be underneath this large heatsink as well as this heatsink down here at the bottom. This board in total has four M.2 base SSDs, but if we take a look at, let's say, a different motherboard, like our actual Crosshair Gene, or let's say like our Hero, or even the Extreme board, these actually may come included with optional adding cards that will allow you to add additional M.2 base SSDs. Now taking a look here at the actual Gene, we'll see that it's actually a smaller form factor board, but it can actually support three M.2 base SSDs. And it does this actually with this guy right here. This is the Gen Z.2 add-in card. So this add-in card will actually have support for a PCI Gen 5 and a PCI Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And it actually also features a very large high performance heat pipe solution on there to be able to ensure great thermal performance. You'll see actually right here next to the dim slots on this motherboard that will take the actual Gen Z.2 add-in card and it will slot in similar to kind of a stick of memory and we'll go ahead and lock it in place. 
and that will allow you to install your M.2 based SSDs. The cool thing about this type of design is, is that it allows for a great deal of flexibility. So even if let's say you've gone ahead and already put together your system or possibly let's say maybe you're going to use like a vertical GPU mount configuration, which a lot of people don't realize would block off access to your M.2 SSDs, or you just don't want to have to go through the pain of having the heat sinks be removed on the motherboard and then kind of remount or do anything along those lines. That's where having this type of design can be helpful. You'll also find other motherboards like a hero based motherboard, which actually comes included with this, which is a hyper M.2 expansion card. And similarly, this will work just like that Gen Z.2 adding card, except it uses a PCI Express slot. So you can remove the protective cover. You'll see that there's actually a PCI Express slot and it would slot into a slot on the motherboard and you would install the M.2 SSD on that card. And again, here it features a large high performance heat sink to be able to ensure that it's well cooled and stable and reliable under full load. So when taking a look at your X670E based motherboards, as well as even your more entry X670 based motherboards, as I noted earlier, the big benefit is going to be the support for PCI Express Drive M5, as well as more M.2 based SSDs. In the past with, let's say AM4 and the X570 or V550 based chipset, you're generally limited to a max of two M.2 based SSDs. But on the entry level side for let's say X670, you'll find that generally will be three drives on pick for instance, something like the Prime X670P. But then if we go all the way up to something like our flagship here with the Crosshair X670E Extreme, this can support up to five drives. So that's gonna be one thing that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind is how many drives do you wanna be able to run? The other thing that you're gonna to wanna to evaluate is that when you're taking a look at the motherboard, um, you're gonna also wanna see what's the actual slot configuration like in terms of the PCI Express protocol that's gonna be supported. Now, as I noted here on this platform, we have support for PCI Express Gen 5, but the slots themselves are fully backwards compatible with drives that are PCI Express Gen 4 and even PCI Express Gen 3 as well. Now, depending on the class of the board you're looking at, you might find that the motherboard of, let's say, this board, the ROG Strix X670E-E Gaming, will support four M.2 based SSDs, but not every single slot will support Gen 5 operation. Going to a higher end board, again, like the Extreme board, would give you support for, let's say, up to three PCI Express Gen 5 M.2 SSDs, but maybe on another board might only be one PCI Express Gen 5 M.2 SSD slot. Now, for the vast majority of users, even one is going to be more than sufficient, because keep in mind, Gen 4 drives already offer outstanding throughput speed and overall performance. But again, if you're looking for the kind of the most future-proofing and you want to be able to run the highest performance configurations, then you're going to want to favor a board that features multiple PCI Express Gen 5 M.2 SSDs that can be installed. Now, one quick tip that you're going to maybe want to keep in mind is going to be when it comes to the installation of your M.2 SSDs, we sometimes actually get people that wonder, is there going to be a difference in the slots? Now, as I noted, of course, there's going to be a difference between some slots supporting PCI Express Gen 5 and others only supporting PCI Express Gen 4. But there's actually also another difference. When you talk about the PCI Express lanes themselves, they're either provided from the CPU PCI Express lanes, or they're actually provided by the X670E based chipsets that are on the motherboard. Now, technically, they both can actually support a high performance level of PCI Express bandwidth that's supplied to your M.2 SSD. But the PCI Express lanes that are supplied by the CPU do technically have a little bit better latency. Now, this can be measured, but in overall real world usage, whether you're talking about games or applications, you generally won't see that there's going to be actually any tangible difference. But if you're somebody that cares about the absolute lowest latency and the best experience possible, then you would want to favor installing your drives first and foremost to slots that are linked to the CPU's PCI Express lanes as opposed to the chipset's PCI Express lanes. Make sure to go ahead and drop your feedback and thoughts down in the comment section down below. And you can also go ahead and hit that like and that subscribe button. So with that, take care, take it easy, and best of luck with your build. Thank you.